world couldn't ever offer. Rest that taps me in the back, reminding me that you are God. The God who loves me all the same, despite all sorrow and shame. Let my feet step into the solid ground, this sure foundation, a place where I can walk and rest and walk again, a place of grace. If you're here for the first time, we want to welcome you. My name is Rev. I'm one of the pastors of Victory Four, together with Pastor Chan, Pastor Mark, Pastor Mel. Come on. Uh, malapit na kasi siyang magiging official na pastor. Yeah. Yes. Si Mel yung pinaklakpakan, ano, hindi yung mga first-timers. Pero... <laughs> If you're here for the first time, can you raise your hand? We just want to welcome you. Meron po, meron. Palakpakan naman natin mga first-timers. So, uh, we have a new series. This is a Place of, of Grace. Ito yung series natin for the Holy Week. And, you know, meron din tayo pong uh, devotionals na, ano na ngayon, available na. No? Uh, Place of Grace devotional. So you can go to the website and... Actually, it's in the Victory Group app. Kung meron kayo nun, uh, download that. And it's going to be uh, a time of uh, just digging deep. No? Uh, magmum- magmumuni-muni, magbubulay-bulay tayo sa salita ng Diyos this Holy Week. So alam ko yung iba sa inyo, ay, magbabasala pala ako ng Bible sa Holy Week kasi akala ko magbibitch lang ako. Yung ganun, di ba? Let's take this opportunity po. Uh, to meditate on the Word of God. And of course, speaking of which, meron po tayong bagong uh, one-to-one booklet. Ito yung sinasabi ko last week, for kids. Available na po sa baba, may bookstore po, well, not really a bookstore, it's just like a book table. Uh, so for parents, I would, ang ganda, grabe lang. No? Uh, one-to-one. See the colors. See how excellent it has been made, created for kids. Now, the one-to-one for kids, po, um, it is going, it is used para mas madaling maintindihan ng mga bata yung, yung foundational beliefs ng Christianity. Pero hindi lamang po ito pwedeng gamitin ng mga nakakatanda na nag nag disciple sa mga bata. Pwede rin pong gamitin ng mga bata. Sila rin pwede rin nilang gamitin to because this is just like um, madali lang po at ang dami actually mas maganda po siya kaysa sa one to one ng adult sa totoo lang yes sa totoo lang kasi ang dami niyang mga you know side stuff na mas lalong lumalalim anyway bago ako mag one to one dito balik po muna tayo sa bago nating serye uh, Holy Week today is Palm Sunday no, ito yung mga dati naglaano tayo ng mga palaspas, di ba? Tapos uh, it's it's a it's a celebration and so bago tayo pumunta sa passage natin kasi ngayon titingnan natin yung denials ni Peter. Nag-advance tayo. Di ba? Pam Sunday pa lang denials na ni Peter yung pag-uusapan natin. Pero put yourself in the psyche ika nga in the context of the disciples at that time. So, bago mag Palm Sunday, pumunta sila kay Lazarus. Alala nyo? And nung mga, mga time na to, before they went to Lazarus, nandun sila sa Galilee. Bakit sila nagstay sa Galilee? Because there was at one point in the gospel, sabi that Jesus chose to stay in Galilee because ang mga kalaban niyang medyo matataas, powerful in Jerusalem, wants him dead. So, nagstay sila sa Galilee, mas safer doon. Now, pupunta na sila sa Jerusalem. Papunta silang Jerusalem. And, eto pa, parating sinasabi ni Jesus na I'm going to Jerusalem and I'm going to be handed over to the chief priest, uh, authorities, and they're going to kill me. But after that, I will rise again. So kung ikaw yung, ano, yung disciples at sinabi ni Jesus, punta tayo na ngayon kay Lazarus. May tension na. As a matter of fact, in John, sabi ni Thomas, 
Let us go with him that we may die with him. Yun na kasi, tensionado na ang sitwasyon. At nung pumunta siya kay Lazarus, nabuhay si Lazarus, everybody was, wow, amazing! And then, Palm Sunday. At nung pumasok siya sa Jerusalem, ang sigaw ng mga tao, Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to the king, uh, to the uh, king of David. Oh, tama. Hosanna to the descendant. Hosanna to the king. Yan sabi nila. Tapos, yung ibang mga tao, mapapansin nyo sa dyan, sino siya, sino siya, sino siya? Bakit kaya naman may nagtatanong sino siya? Kasi, it's Passover feast. And there are a lot of people in Jerusalem na hindi taga Jerusalem. Sa ibang lugar, sa ibang bansa, pupunta ang mga Jews to celebrate the Passover. So think of around 200 to 250,000 people in Jerusalem who are not from Jerusalem. Kaya yung iba, kilala siya, yung mga taga-Jerusalem. Pero yung iba, sino to, sino to? And kung ikaw ngayon yung, ano, yung, yung disciple, high spirits ka, grabing ganda ng reception natin. Ganda, tingnan mo yung Lord natin, nakaride sa donkey, tapos, alam mo yun? Yung mga ano nila, cloak nandun, may mga nagpapalaspas. ba? Yes! Yes! Eto na, alam na nila na siya ang Mesaya. Eto na, konting ano na lang. Makaka-create na tayo ng army. As a matter of fact, when they were singing, shouting Hosanna, which means save, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna to the son of David, when they were shouting that, ang nasa isip nila, he's going to save us from the Romans. Yun nasa isip nila. But, may tension pa rin. Bakit? Kasi may opposition pa rin. May mga nasa position pa rin na gusto siyang patayin. So, Palm Sunday, um, pumunta si Jesus sa, sa, sa temple, umalis, bumalik sa temple, umalis, and then, eto na. Thursday night na. Okay? So, eto na yung Passover feast. At pag binasa nyo, in the book of Mark, tinanong siya ng mga disciples niya, saan tayo mag, mag-hold ng Passover meal? Sabi ni Jesus, very cryptic, sabi ni Jesus, go into the city, you will see a man carrying a water, a jar of water, and then ask him, saan, saan kakain si Jesus at ang mga kasamahan niya ng Passover meal? And then follow him, and he will lead you to an upper room. Bakit kaya ganun? Bakit walang pangalan? Because, alam ni Jesus, merong traitor, si Judas. At bago pa mag-pass over meal, pumunta na si Judas sa mga high priest at sinab- sa high, sa Sanhedrin at sinabi niya, I will betray Jesus and I will look for an opportune time. A time away from the public. A time na kami-kami lang para pag inaresto niyo si Jesus, walang gulo. So, magkakain sila ng Passover, hindi nila alam kung saan. Si Jesus lang yung nakakaalam. At nung pumunta sila sa city, at meron ngang tao na may jar. At minsan isipin mo, eh, hindi ba maraming tao doon na may jar? Kasi nung panahon nila, babae po ang nagbibitbit ng tubig. Hindi lalaki. So yun, nung makita nilang may lalaki, eto na siya. Grabe ano, hindi lang pala savior si Jesus, spy din pala siya. Di ba? Parang may, parang it's just, the tension nandun. And now they are in the upper room eating the Passover. And that is where we're going to look at this passage. At makikita natin, roller coaster ang kanilang highs and lows. Makikita natin na, yes, mananalo na tayo. Pero at the same time, makikita natin na, parang, Lord, parang it doesn't make sense ang ginagawa mo. And makikita natin that somehow, even if they are, they have been with Jesus for three years, they've seen the miracles, they've seen people rise from the dead, they've seen Jesus provide bread, food in the wilderness, their faith is high, but somehow, when it's tested, nakikita talaga nila na kulang pa pala kami sa faith. And the problem is not the object of their faith, the problem is their faith 
has shifted from Jesus to who they are, to what they can do, and to the circumstance around them. So yun po ang babasahin natin at pag-aaralan natin. And my prayer is this, that the Word of God will accomplish the purpose of God in our lives. So if you have your Bibles with you, which I all, hopefully, you do bring your Bibles. Can you please stand? We're going to read Mark 14, verse 16 to 42. So mahaba-haba po ito. Oh, sorry. Mali po ako. 26 to 42. 26 to 42. My bad, my bad. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives and Jesus said to them, you will all fall away for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though they fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said emphatically, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. And when they went to a place called Gethsemane, he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter, James, and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little further, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch an hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know how to answer him or what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Lord, we thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, reveal your truth to us that it will change us and draw us to you and follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please do take your seat. So yung binasa natin after the what we call the Last Supper. Ito yung nasa dining table nyo. Ah, nasa, hindi dining table, nasa dining wall nyo. Di ba yung picture doon? Uh, so after that, um, they went. And it says here, when they had sung a hymn, usually what they sing is uh, Psalms 16, 17, 18. It's called the Hallel or the Praise. And guess what? Tapos na yung Passover meal. Sinabi na ni Jesus, this is the bread. This bread is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. So tapos na yon. Ngayon, papunta na sila. High spirits na naman sila. Well, actually, let me see. So Passover, high spirits, kaya lang si Jesus may sinabi na parang nakakalito. Kasi sinabi niya, this this bread is my body. So siguro kung ikaw yung disciple nun, I mean, first time pa lang naman eh. Tayo, alam na natin, di ba? Nagko-communion tayo. Next week, magko-communion tayo. Pero sila, first time nilang narinig. Alam mo yung min- minsan, sanay ka na sa kaibigan mo na may, may, may sinasabi na kung ano-ano. Hindi ba yung sinabi ni Jesus, I am the bread from heaven. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood. So parang siguro kung ikaw yung isa sa mga disciples nun, Ito na naman si Jesus. And take note, hindi mo alam that this is the Passion Week. Hindi mo alam. Ang alam mo lang, nandito kayo sa Jerusalem, delikado, may tension, pero marami kayong supporters. Diba? And then, nung 
papunta na kayo sa no sa sa Mount of Olives. Ni sinabi si Jesus, you will all fall away for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. This is a a prophetic word in Zechariah chapter 13 verse 7. And if you read Zechariah uh, Zechariah early days of the Persian Empire Nalala niyo last week, Persian Empire. Diba? Cyrus, Darius, Xerxes. So this is early days, early years of the Persian Empire. Prophet Zechariah, kasama niya si Haggai. Okay, those are the prophets during that time. So I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. And Jesus said, you will all fall away. And in Zechariah, it talks about the prophetic word for the Messiah, that the Messiah will give his life for his people and redeem his people. At ang pinapakita dito is that si Jesus, alam niya kung ano yung mangyayari. Alam niya ang kamatayang naghihintay. Alam niya ang suffering na naghihintay. Subalit, hindi siya nagugulat. Dahil alam niya, kasama to sa plano ng Diyos. That when Jesus gave his life on the cross, he was not a victim. Hindi siya yung, yung parang napagbintangan lang. Hindi ganun. Alam niya kung ano yung pinapasok niya. Hindi siya napilitan. Hindi siya nagulat. Alam niya. Gagawin ko to para sa san libutan. And the reason why I underlined you will fall away is because Jesus knew that they will be scattered in weakness and in lack of faith, they will abandon Jesus. They will reject, so to speak, His plan of salvation. Because for them, kailangan manalo tayo against the Romans. And interesting, na kahit sinabi niya, you will all fall away and they, the sheep will be scattered meron siyang hope na binigay. Pero syempre, kung ikaw yung disciple at that time, hindi mo na narinig yung hope. Ang narinig mo lang, you will fall away. Kasi sabi niya, but after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Binibigyan sila na, ni Jesus ng hope. Ano man ang mangyari sa gabing to, ano man ang mangyari sa mga susunod na araw, I will be raised up and I will gather you once again. You may be scattered because of your weakness. You may be scattered because of your fear. But when I do what I'm going to do, when I show myself powerful, taking over, overcoming death, I will gather you because I will strengthen your faith. See, as we go through this Holy Week, we must come to an understanding and a belief that the suffering, the death, and the resurrection of Christ is central and necessary for our redemption, our salvation. Tanggalin mo isa dyan, wala. Bakit? Kasi kung hindi siya namatay, hindi siya mariresurrect. Tama? Nakita na ba kayo ng na buhay? Kasi naglalakad si Pastor Mark, eh, Pastor Mark, naresurrect ko. Eh, buhay yan eh. His life, his suffering, his death, and his resurrection, it's central. Apart from that, wala. We cannot be saved. Kahit gano mo kamahal ang katabi mo, kahit gano ka gandayan at kagwapo, kahit gano ka generous, kahit gano ka prayerful, kung hindi na nagdusa, namatay, at nabuhay muli ang Panginoong Jesus, our faith is futile. Amen? But here's what I want us to understand, that when... When Jesus was saying this, when Jesus was making that promise out of Scripture, then as people of God today, we must realize, kaya napaka-importante na sinabi ng Panginoon, meditate on His Word day and night. Bakit? We were just talking about grace. We're, we're having a series of place of grace. But did you not know that when we meditate on the Word of God, it puts us in a position to hold on to the promise of grace. Because the promise of grace ay nandito. Nandito siya. Wala po sa Regal Films, Viva Films. Wala sa Itbulaga. Wala po sa Show... Ano pa ba yung mga... Wala doon. Wala sa 
gobyerno, wala sa presidente, wala sa CNN, ABC, ABC, tama, ABC News. Di ba? Wala sa, may magandang gabi ba yan pa ba? Meron pa, di ba? Wala na ba? Meron pa ba? Wala na? Sorry po. Wala na raw. Dito po, dito sa katotohanan ng Panginoon, sa katotohanan ng salita ng Diyos, nandito po ang biyaya. Ang promise of grace. Ano ba ang mga pangako ng Panginoon na pinangahawakan natin? Dahil hindi lamang po tayo naliligtas sa biyaya. We're not just saved by grace through faith. We are blessed by grace through faith. We live by grace through faith. We love by grace through faith. And so nung narinig yun ng mga disciples, ano sabi ni Peter? Even though they fall away, Lord, tong mga, yung 11 na to, di ba? Ay hindi, 10 pa lang kasi wala na si Judas. Yung 10 to, ibahin mo ako. Di ba? Sabi ni Peter, even though they fall away, I will not. And he said, if I must die with you, I will not deny you. It's like the echo of what Esther said. If I perish, I perish. And Peter was so confident of his faith until his faith was tested. And there's nothing wrong with confidence in your faith, that you have faith. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, because we are following a Messiah who suffered, we will also suffer. We will also be persecuted. We will also be misunderstood. We will be labeled. We will be falsely accused. But guess what? Our Messiah went through it and overcame it. And He's giving us also the, not just the desire, but the grace to go through it as well. So, minsan iniisip natin na si Peter, coward siya. Kasi alam na natin nangyari, di ba? Dininay niya si Jesus three times. Pero alam niyo ba, si Peter, handa talaga siyang mamatay. Naalala niyo sa garden, nung dumating na si Judas, at dumating yung parang isang regiment ng mga soldiers, anong ginawa ni Peter? Kinuha niya yung sword niya. Hinampas niya, hinampas. Tinaga niya sa yung isang servant, di ba? Sa te- Grab. Alam mo, hindi ko alam kung ganun siya kaasintado. Or yung pinupuntirya niya, yung ulo. Pero hindi siya ganun kagaling. So, tenga yung tapyas niya. Kasi ang hi- asintado ka kung tenga lang. Diba? So, natapyas niya yung tenga. Binalik ni Jesus. Hinil ni Jesus. At sabi ni Jesus sa kanya, put away your sword because those who live by the sword will die by the sword. Pero handa siyang mamatay. May sword siya. Ginamit niya. Yung iba mga disciples na natulala eh. Pero siya, presence of mind. Ganon si Peter. Tapos minsan kasi, kala natin na coward yan. Something happened here. Kasi sabi niya, I'm, 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 if I must die with you, I will not deny you. Pero minsan, pag napansin natin, o pag tiningnan mo, si Peter, ano yung nag sa kanya to deny Jesus? Where in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was ready. But in that courtyard of the high priest, nagtanong lang sa kanya yung servant girl. No, ah, hindi ko siya kilala. Gumanon siya. Ano kaya yun? Could it be that for Peter, this does not make sense, Lord? This suffering does not make sense. The man who raised people from the dead, the man who calmed the sea, is now willingly suffering. There's great injustice and God is not doing something about it. Baka yun yung naisip ni Peter. Kasi si Peter was willing to die. And sometimes, ganit, ganito tayo. We're willing to go out in a blaze of glory. Alam mo yun? Yung 
Lord, mamamatay ako para sa I will suffer for you. I will die for you. Sino, sino sa atin dito, we're willing to die for God? Walang gusto mag... Hindi po ito trick question. Gusto ko malaman ang naman ng puso natin. Di ba? Surely, who among us, we're saying we're willing to die for God. Okay. But sometimes the way we think about dying for God is, alam mo yun, yan yung, yung if a firing squad ka, pupugutan ka ng ulo. Di ba? Papakain ka sa leon, kaya ko yan. Yes, yes. But remember what Jesus said? You want to follow me? You want to be my disciple? Deny yourself. Take up your cross daily and follow me. But sometimes you want that glorious death. Yung pag finiring squad ka, slow motion ka pa. Di ba? Gumano. Yung background music pa. But, paano kung sinabi ni God sa'yo, sige, die for me by forgiving the person who has scammed you. Forgiving the husband who has betrayed you. Die for me by being generous to that kuripot mong relative na nangangailangan ngayon. Na nung ikaw humingi, hindi ka kilala. I mean, I could say to my wife, I would take the bullet for you. But will I be kind to her when she's in a bad mood? Oh no, you never have a bad mood. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Will I be kind for, to her if she accidentally lets the dog out of the house and I have to chase it? We're willing to die. But are we willing to follow? Day in, day out. I'm willing to die for you, Lord. But I'm not willing to pay my taxes. I'm willing to die for you but I'm not willing to be faithful to my spouse. Peter said, if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And Jesus said to him, it can happen to you. No, sinasabi ko lang to na, huwag tayo masyadong mayabang. Diba? Kasi tingin natin kay Peter, ah, si Peter ano yan? Diba? Tingin natin tayo rin na, hindi, hindi ako ma, I will not fall. So pakisabi sa katabi mo, it can happen to you. Okay. So, sagutin mo siya. Huwag ka mayabang. Ayun, huwag ka mayabang. Okay. So, eto na. Nasa Getsemane na sila. Alam na natin yung nangyari dito sa Getsemane. ba? Pero eto, amazing, na sabi dito, sabi ni Jesus ha, Jesus himself said, My soul is very sorrowful even to death. He was greatly distressed and troubled. You know what this shows us? That this is an authentic account. Because this is an embarrassing detail. Kung ikaw gumagawa-gawa ka ng storya noong mga panahon na yun, ang hero mo, matindi. No? Ang hero mo, ibang klase. Yung hindi tinatablan ng bala. Or kung barilin, talagang naiiwasan yung bala. Pag isa na lang yung bala, may punyal pa yan. Hati yung bala. ba? Yung tumawa, kilala si Lito Lapit. Okay. Yung mga ganun. Sa kanila, pinakita niya that Jesus Himself, I mean, Son of God, Savior, distressed. Yes. Because Jesus understood what He was going to go through. Jesus understood the pain and the suffering, not just physically, but spiritually, na nung sinabi niya, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? To be forsaken by the Father. To feel that because now the sin of the world is yours. Even if you're not sinful, even if you're sinless. And then going a little further, he fell on the ground and prayed. Nakikita niyo ba yung mga artwork about Jesus in the garden? Yung parang serene pa siya, di ba? Yung parang Nakaganon? I mean, this is agony. This is anguish. This is like, siguro humagulgul ang Panginoon. Father, nothing is impossible with you. Yet not what I will, but what you will. 
the agony, the distress. And then nung bumalik siya doon sa mga nagsabing, oh, we will never fall away. We will die with you. Can you not watch one hour? Die with you? Hindi ka kayo magising? Diba? Sa atin, Lord, I will die for you. Can you not read the word for an hour? Hirap, Lord, eh. Pero Netflix marathon, five hours. Kaya, Lord, kaya. Napipikit na nga ako, talagang sinasampal ko eh, kasi ayun na yung bido. Diba? Kaya. Pero one hour nito, Lord, one hour. Lord, magbimeditate sa word mo, one hour. That's too much, five minutes. Five minutes. Okay na yun. Sabi pa natin, it's not the quantity, it's the quality. <laughs> Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Prayers. Getting into that place of prayer. Praying puts us in a position to receive the strength of grace. Parati ba tayo nagpo-fall? Tingnan natin yung prayer life natin. Parati ba tayong galit, bugnote, negative? Tingnan natin. Could we not stay an hour? We will die for you, Lord. Then let's meditate. Let's take that time to pray. And again, he went away and prayed. And again, they were sleeping. Three times nangyari to. And he came a third time and said, are you still sleeping? It is enough. It is enough. There's a time of rest. and There's a time to arise. And so Judas came. And then they fell away. Have you come out against a robber? Oops, muntik na, Lord. Thank you for saving me. Oh, another three months. Oh. Okay, dito ako, dito ako. <laughs> day after day, I was with you in the temple teaching and you did not seize me. But here's what Jesus said. But let the scripture be fulfilled. Jesus, alam niya mangyayari. And they fell away. They left him. They fled. Jesus was not caught off guard. But the disciples fled. Those who promised we will never fall away. Have you promised? Will you stay at least an hour? Will you know him? in His truth, in His word? Will you surrender in prayer so that you can receive the strength of grace? And we know what happened. When Jesus was with the Sanhedrin, He was asked, are you the Christ, the Son of God? And He said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. I am used by God in Exodus, I am. The Son of Man by Daniel, the Son of Man who was somehow at par with God himself in Daniel. And coming on the clouds of heaven, did you know that in the Bible, only God comes in the clouds? And so what is Jesus saying? I am. I am God. And so, what further witnesses do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him, deserving death. And so here he is, being led out. And Peter was there. And we know the story. Peter denied it first time. I neither know nor understand what you mean. Sabi sa kanya, di ba kasama ka doon? Ha? Hindi kita naiintindihan. Sumali siya. Eh, nakita siya ulit. Sinun, siguro, Marite, siguro, I don't know. Sinundan siya. Nakita siya ulit. Oh. 
And this man is one of them. But again, he denied it. And after a while, the bystanders again said to Peter, third time, certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse and to swear. Bakit? Para ipakita na hindi niya kilala. Diba? Nagmura siya. Philippine Island naman. Sinabi ko na nga hindi ko kilala eh. Diba? Anak ng dalagang, may mga ganun. Kambing or whatever. I don't know the man. And then, boom! Immediately, the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus said to him, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. He broke down and wept. In a parallel passage in Luke, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. When he denied Jesus three times, tiningnan siya ng Panginoon. Imagine yourself being Peter, one of the best friends of Jesus, one who walked on water, one who have seen the miraculous, not just the miraculous, but even the private ones. When the daughter of Jairus was raised from the dead, it was only Peter, James, and John. In the Mount of Transfiguration, it was only Peter, James, and John. The other disciples were not there. You're part of the inner circle. And you denied him and you looked at him and he looked at you. Now, when Jesus looked at Peter, anong klaseng tingin ang nakita kaya ni Peter? How did Jesus look at Peter? And the way you and I answer this question gives a clue on how we see Jesus in our lives. Did Jesus look at Peter with disgust? <laughs> with rolling of eyes? Did Jesus look at Peter with that look of, I told you so? <sighs> Did Jesus look at Peter with that, Yabang mo kasi. Wala ka rin palang panama. Dami mong kwento, wala kang kwenta. Did Jesus look at Peter with the look of condemnation? Or did Jesus look at Peter the way Jesus looked at the rich young man in another passage in Mark? Jesus looked at him and loved him. What kind of look did Jesus give to Peter? And when you are in that moment of failure and you know that God sees you, what kind of look does he give to you? And that would reveal to your heart what kind of God you believe in. And I know that today, ano man ang position mo ngayon, you might be in that place of success or failure or alinlangan. God is looking at you and me. How do you look at Him? Because I'm so glad that when Peter failed, hindi siya tinuldukan ng Panginoon. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to have you that he might sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. On the outside, when we look at what Peter did, he has failed. But Jesus has given him hope. Na bago pa nangyari yun, pinapalam na sa kanya ng Panginoon. Pwede kang bumalik. You can always return. And I'm still rooting for you. Huwag mong tuldukan ang iyong pananampalataya dahil sa iyong pagkakamali, sa panghihina mo, or sa kasalanan. Never do that. 
as long as you are in Christ, your failure is not final. Amen. I I met with a few men um, this week, and then nakuento lang sila. No, isa sa mga nandon ang kuento niya. Nagkahiwalay sila ng asawa niya for nine years dahil sa kalokohan niya. And then, nung pandemic, nasa bahay lang, parang na, na, na-feel niya na tinatag siya ni God. So, nanood siya ng mga online staff and nap- napunta siya sa online natin. Pastor Jeff. Alala si Pastor Jeff? Yeah. Um, DZRH, I think. DZRH nga ba? Every 8 a.m. With Ted Philon. Anyway, nag-plug, you know. And then, na-plug siya sa Victory Group. Pandemic. After the pandemic, nag-meet sila face-to-face. And with the encouragement of the Word of God and spiritual community, unti-unting nanumbalik ang kanyang pananampalataya, ang hope na magkakabalikan sila ulit ng kanyang asawa. At niligawan niya ulit ang kanyang asawa. And it took him two years para magkabalikan sila. Nine years na hiwalay. And because God is faithful, God gave them the opportunity and the grace to be restored. As long as you are in Christ, your failure is not final. It doesn't matter what people say or how the world looks at you. Your failure is not final. But not only that, sabi pa ni Jesus, when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Yes, your failure is not final. Yes, there's restoration. But guess what? There's a mission. Strengthen your brothers. Bumalik ka sa Panginoon at bibigyan ka niya ng kalakasan na magiging pagpapala ang buhay mo. Hindi lamang na ikaw makakatanggap ng pagpapala, ikaw ang magiging pagpapala. Tingnan mo yung katabi mo. Encourage mo naman siya. Your life is a blessing. Yung iba sa inyo na discourage kasi hindi kasi nabihan. No? You're not just called to repent. You're called to be a blessing to fellow believers. At saan mangyayari yan? Saan mangyayari yan? Church community. At alam ko, minsan yung iba sa atin, nag-church community ako, pero imbis na ma-encourage ako, na-discourage pa ako. Kasi wala silang ginawa ko ni Mag Marites. Pero ang, ang, et, ang ganda, ang ganda nitong sa sinabi ni Jesus, Peter, when you return, strengthen your brothers, rinig ng iba. So hindi sinabi na, Peter, when you return, have dominion over your brothers. Demean your brothers. Kasi ikaw nag-return ka. Sila nga, tumakbo sila eh. Hindi nga sila pumunta dun sa courtyard ng priest eh. Hindi nga sila nag-witness eh. So sobrang takot nila. Nawala na lang sila. When you return, strengthen your brothers. Guess what? Your life is going to be used by God to strengthen someone. And my question is, who's strengthening you? Because meditating on the word, hold on to the promise of grace. Praying, receive the strength of grace. Community, you're a conduit of God's grace. Ang buhay mo, hindi sa'yo. Sa Diyos. Sa Panginoon. At sinasabi niya sa atin, we cannot do it alone. We must all come to that place of grace wherein we say, God, this is not about me. This is about you. Why don't we all stand? Lord, we thank you. Wherever we are, we can look to that greatest place of grace, the cross. And whatever we are today, some of us, maaring parehas kami ng mga disciples, maaring kami si Peter, Panginoon. We have betrayed you. We have run away. We have been unfaithful. 
we have been unforgiving. But we thank you na hindi mo tinutuldukan ang aming mga kamalian. And I ask, Lord, that this church, this community will be a place wherein instead of giving condemnation, we will re- give out and receive mercy. Instead of judgment, we will give out and receive grace because of our God who is so gracious to us. Panginoon, strengthen us today. Some of us, we have returned. Some of us, we want to return. And I want to take this opportunity. Return. Return. For God wants you. And when you do, you will receive that grace to strengthen others. If that's you, if today you're saying, I repent, I want to return. Raise your hand in surrender and see how Jesus looks at you. Not with a look of condemnation, not with a look of disdain, not with a look of disgust, but a look of love and grace. For you are forgiven, says the Lord. And you are being transformed by the Holy Spirit. And you are renewed. And you are given the strength to move forward and follow Him. Lord, today we commit to deny ourselves, to carry our cross daily, and to follow You. We will not wait for the moments of glory, but in the everyday, mundane, ordinary ways, we will follow You. Because you have been gracious. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Meditate on the word. Pray. Amen. I'm not going to ask you to stay an hour. I'm just going to ask you to stay five minutes as we lift up the name of God in worship.
Lord, even as we commit our lives to you, may we walk in purity and holiness, in righteousness and obedience, in humility and repentance, in generosity and compassion, to give glory and honor to you alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. See you next Saturday.